I'm Dr. Anthony Cave, a Stanford and Harvard trained anesthesiologist and integrative medicine specialist, and I'm a big advocate for evidence-based supplements for my patients here in San Francisco. But when I had a patient walking into surgery holding a bag of 16 different supplement bottles, my radar antenna shot through the roof. We were actually okay to start the surgery until the very last second when they were about to go to sleep on the operating room table and then their heart all of a sudden went into an erratic rhythm called atrial fibrillation. I had to cancel the surgery immediately and send the patient to a cardiologist to have their heart shocked. This young woman who was struggling with chronic fatigue syndrome or myalgic encephalomyelitis or MECFS and a naturopathic doctor had given them many supplements to improve her energy levels. The problem is that one of these supplements was likely contaminated with an illegal product, which is unfortunately a common problem here in the United States. Specifically, I suspect one of those energy supplements was contaminated illegally with an amphetamine to artificially boost her energy levels. With high likelihood that illegal amphetamine contamination was intended to increase metabolism to cause weight loss or to increase energy, which can have the side effect of overstimulating the heart. And when your heart is stressed to that level and then you add the stress of surgery, you can easily tip it over the edge and cause one of these abnormal heart rhythms like atrial fibrillation. So what are the most common and dangerous supplement contaminants and why are so many of my patients at risk of inadvertently being poisoned by these potentially healing supplements? In this video I'm going to share this critical information with you and at the end give you the three tips that you need to be mindful of anytime you put any supplement into your body especially when you're talking with your doctor about it. And to set the record straight, there are many wonderful naturopaths out there, just like how there are many wonderful MDs out there, but there are also some who are one trick ponies selling supplement after supplement. And when your healthcare provider is like a hammer, don't be surprised if they view you like a nail and push their most common treatments on you. First, you need to know the potential risks of any supplement, whether oral or topical. Number one is microbial contamination, meaning you have little bacteria or fungi growing inside that supplement capsule. This is a big deal for herbs that are grown out of the earth, like Kratom in the salmonella contamination that was found a few years back. Very young patients, very old patients, and immunocompromised patients are at the highest risk of complications if there is any bacterial or fungal contamination in these supplements. Number two is heavy metal contamination, and this is a big deal for herbs that are grown in contaminated soil. So if you're harvesting plants that are grown in soil that's contaminated with arsenic, mercury, cadmium, or lead, don't be surprised if the supplement that you concentrate from that plant also has high levels of those toxic heavy metals. And there are many cardiovascular, neurocognitive, and even cancer risks associated with heavy metal contaminations like that. This study from Canada showed that 1 in 20 supplements had high levels of these heavy metals. And another study looking at Ayurvedic herbs found that 1 in 5 supplements had toxic levels of these heavy metals. And this is just one reason why you need to be aware about what part of the world your supplements are coming from. Number three is that some supplements may actually illegally contain pharmaceutical medications in them. This is mostly seen in supplements promoting muscle gains, sexual enhancement, and weight loss. And that's because it's relatively easy to sneak erectile dysfunction medications, anabolic steroids, or stimulants into these medications, and I suspect that's what my patient was experiencing complications from right before their surgery. You can see this study where one in five supplements were shown to be adulterated with prescription medications. Number four is the danger of substituting plants or parts of herbs to cut corners and save costs. For example, the spike in liver toxicity that occurred with kava may have been due to substituting one variety of a plant for another. Chinese herbs in particular may be at even higher risk of this particular type of adulteration. Another telling example is with Kratom, where some varieties might be enriched with certain plant chemicals that have stronger opioid-like activity, which can increase the risk of over-sedation and overdose. And as if that's not bad enough, it may also increase the addiction potential. And number five is the classic question of whether your supplement actually has what's printed on the label of the bottle. 
There are so many examples of significant discrepancies between what's actually found in the supplement when it's tested by a third party versus what the manufacturer actually printed on the label. Look at this study of CBD supplements where less than half of them actually had what was printed on the label. The other big issue here is the terminology called proprietary blending, which you'll see on the back of many labels, which makes it very difficult, if not impossible, to know exactly what's in the bottle and at what doses and what concentrations. This all sounds very scary, but I don't want you to be discouraged because I'm going to give you the practical tips so that you can reap the benefits of these supplements while minimizing these potential risks. Before I give you my top three tips, if you know anyone who's ever been harmed by a supplement, let me know in the comments below so others can learn from their experience. If you know anyone who's benefited from a supplement, I also want to hear your experience. If you're learning something new, please share with your loved ones. And don't forget to visit my clinic's website for more information at www.claris-health.com. Like I said at the beginning, I love supplements when used appropriately with evidence and with the right dosage and the right safety profile. Meaning they need to be safe of microbial contamination, heavy metals, and we need to know what's actually in that pill. So here are three tips for you before you ever put something into your body. Number one, make sure you actually need the supplement. This might sound obvious, but many patients are on supplements, and when I ask them why they're on them, they say, gee, I don't know, my doctor told me to take it. Or they might tell me something really vague like, oh, I hear it's good for my heart or good for my liver. And before you know it, they have a bag of all those supplements and it costs a lot of money and who knows what the side effect profiles are. For my patients, I specifically use peer-reviewed studies and whenever possible, I try to use their genetic information so that it's a personalized approach with supplements that are tailored to what they need with the right efficacy and safety profile. Number two, Make sure that supplements that you're considering have been tested by a third party to minimize the risk of microbial contamination, heavy metal toxicities, and to actually make sure that you know what dose you're getting in every pill. I won't recommend a particular brand or supplement to a patient if I wouldn't recommend it to one of my family members or take that same supplement myself. So you need to feel comfortable asking your doctor what testing that brand has had to ensure its safety before you put it into your body. I would never want the risks of a supplement to be greater than the potential benefits of that supplement. Check out my video linked below where I go more in depth on this topic if you want to learn more about that risk benefit alternative discussion that you should always have with your doctor. And following that theme is number three. You need to always ask your doctor, what's the worst thing that could happen if I don't take this supplement? You should always ask your doctor this question because you need to know what the risks of doing something versus the risks of not doing something will be to your body. Just because something is natural doesn't mean it's safe. And you sure as heck want to make sure that the risks of not taking that medication are a heck of a lot higher than the potential risks of taking the medication or supplement. I don't want people to end up with those bags and bags of bottles of supplements if it's not doing them any good and just wasting their money or even worse, putting their body at harm. So please remember these three tips and share them with your friends and loved ones. There are always risks with any medical pill or procedure or surgery and you need to advocate for yourself so that you can take the best care of your body and understand what will be happening to it. Please hit that subscribe button to keep up with all of my medical advocacy content and remember, you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told.